I'm emotionally exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Live at the Hive, episode 118, everybody. My name is Dan Nadelko. I'm Matej Cherlenko. And? Producer Matt. Producer Matt is in the Producer Matt. Why don't, Dan, why don't you uh, tell everyone what's, what's kind of going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were all tickety-boo with a brand new Elgato cam link so we could have synced up audio on everything. <laughs> yep. Um, I hope my audio is not out of sync now. It might be. I might... It looks okay on my end. Yeah. But we never know. It's always like <laughs> afterwards. It's so. lately, lately we've been having audio sync issues. And yeah. what is happening today was one of our HDMI cables broke. So Matt flew down in my car to Canada Computers, <laughs> uh, picked up another HDMI cable. We thought we were all good. I had everything set up and ready to go. <laughs> and then, bam. Still didn't work. Still didn't work with the one camera. So we've hijacked the Logitech Elgato. We yep. actually, um, we have the window open now too. We do have the window open. I can close yep. it for us. That's fine. Um, and so we've been scrambling just to, to get the setup modified at the mm -hmm. last second, but we're here. Yes, we are. We're here. <laughs> we're alive. We're happy. We're healthy. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Friday. <laughs> it's all good. We are, like we say, it is uh, digital marketing from the trenches. This, these that are the true. trenches. That is true. This is true. So you get to see behind the scenes. Just a little peek. Organically. Just a little peek. <laughs> can you zoom my scene in just a little bit? Yeah, I can zoom you just in. Just a, a bit, touch yeah. wide. Just also in the chat, uh, for everyone who's watching, let us know if Dan's delayed or not throughout the stream. I kind of want to see uh, if it starts off in sync and then it slowly gets delayed because I feel like that's also a little bit of the problem. That, mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, yeah. that is the progressive format. You can turn that off in OBS. Okay. That is true. All right, so... Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Sorry. All right. Um, today on Live at the Hive, we are talking about, well, we're going to have what's new, obviously, and what's working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but today we will be talking about the power of the infographic. Yes. And how to customize it for social. Yes. We'll be jumping into a little bit of that, customizing it, mm -hmm. how to uh, get it out to your audience, and which social channels work best for them as well. That's right. You've been doing quite a bit of Pinteresting Things. A lot of Pinteresty things this yeah. week, yeah, a hundred percent, especially involving infographics. But they do very well, obviously on uh, on pin Pinterest, especially. Mm -hmm. But they also do well on Facebook too. Yep, noticed that as well. Yep. How about especially Instagram? Instagram, people don't really like the carousel on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Swiping to see content, I've, yeah, we've noticed that people don't really they don't really engage with it. They see the first mm -hmm. image and they keep on scrolling. But we've noticed in Facebook. Mm -hmm. Totally different. I think it just maybe it's because of the audience. Mm -hmm. People are more willing there to look at the content. Yep, one hundred percent. And I think the other thing with Instagram too is it's primarily a, a photo, mm -hmm. sharing. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Regardless of what anybody says about what you can put yeah. there with quotes and things. Yeah. Absolutely. Hundred percent. It's either video we find with video or static images. Right. Better. 100%. Yeah. Hundred percent on Instagram. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So why don't we dive into. Um, What's new? What's new? I kind of wanted to start with that Kevin Indig article because I Let's thought it was it. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you on Slack right now, Mate? Yes. Okay, let me Slack you this article because cool. it's uh, it was really well written. So Kevin Indig is a, he's an excellent SEO. I believe he's the head of SEO at G two, mm -hmm. so G two Crowd. If you're familiar with that review mm -hmm. site, um, and he does quite a bit of tweeting and writing. Uh, in this article, it is the nasty effects of Google search traffic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See the latest <laughs> comment? <laughs> Scott Amos. Stan's not exactly delayed. He's more of a late bloomer. <laughs> Zing. Scott Amos won. Dan, nothing. I hope oh, my friend man. Carlo shows up, too, because he said he was probably going to stop by. He's also a marketer. He was going to put in a few good one-liners. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all good. Um, so if we can get that up, there we go. Um, so Kevin Indig is a, is a really good SEO. He, he does quite a bit of uh, reading, uh, writing and tweeting on topics. Mm -hmm. And I think he really kind of hit the nail on the head here. Um, the long and the short of this is... Um, what happened when people got addicted to Google organic traffic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that addiction is now <sighs> challenged by things like a, z a zero click Google search. So if you're not familiar with what that is, um, in the rich results for Google search, you'll see a lot of information now being presented to you. So you don't need to leave Google. 
Mm -hmm. right? So whether there's information in FAQ boxes, quite often there's like longer descriptions and even how to's where there's like six or seven or eight points Mm -hmm. in there. And part of this is Google's shifting. And if you scroll down a little bit, um, the, the other interesting Google fact here is that in their history, they have almost, they have always guaranteed 20% year over year mm-hmm. quarterly revenue. Mm-hmm. That's incredible for any business to post those kinds of ever increasing returns and yeah. it takes, it's, nothing stops, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you, um, if you look at the picture of uh, Sundar Pichai, mm-hmm. um, where at Google I.O. last year, he mm-hmm. said, we're moving from a company that helps you find answers to a company that helps you get things done. That is two, those are two drastically different yeah. things when we're talking yeah. about Google, mm-hmm. right? 100%. Mm-hmm. So what this means is, is that Google is starting to create products and services that keep you within the Google, Google ecosystem rather than the search engine launching you off into people's sites, right? Okay. And yeah. they've actually been saying this for a year, that this is what's going to happen. Okay, yeah. Um, now, the question is, is so Google turns from a search into a discovery engine, mm-hmm. right? Because yep. they have tools built in. Really great example um, are for, and Scott, this will be from our, our long time ago history, uh, OTAs, and I think your mom read yep. that. She's a travel agent. Yep. 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 So yes. OTAs are online travel agents, uh, mm-hmm. Expedia, Booking.com, mm-hmm. et cetera. This is a really long article. It's really well worth the read. But what happened was, Google started their own booking engine on Google.com, yeah, which basically subverted. Expedia's stock went down significantly. Yeah, they got hurt by it because mm-hmm. Google released a product that was their specialty. Now the question is, is that a monopoly? Yeah, right. Yeah. If they control that search engine, then they release their own tool. They give their own tool precedence over everybody else's mm-hmm. that exists. This is a very real uh, issue for a lot of businesses. And what they ended up having to do is they have to now pay Google oh, man. to get the traffic, mm-hmm. which is monopolistic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is a very good case for <coughs> one, the problems that Google's going to face with the Department of Justice. Mm-hmm. Right. Because this, <laughs> this is problematic now. You're at, you're this is a, this is legal territory now. Yeah, <laughs> it it really it really is. Yeah. The thing is, is that that's going to take a decade to go through, mm-hmm. and some of these companies won't exist through it. Yeah. Um. So the point that Kevin uh, makes in here, uh, that you can go down. It's just, it's a fifteen minute read. Um. It it's very well done, and I think the lesson here, and we were we had a I, I just replied to his tweet. Um. The solution to this is to diversify your traffic sources. Yeah. Is okay. to never ever in the world of marketing rely solely on one main traffic source regardless of what it is. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Especially, um, and you see this a lot also with leased properties. YouTube is a leased property. Facebook okay. is a mm-hmm. leased property. Mm-hmm. Instagram <coughs> is a leased property. You mm-hmm. don't own it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So whenever an algorithm changes or one of the companies decides to change how things work, Mm -hmm. you have absolutely zero control over it. So the solution is diversify, diversify, diversify. Go to Microsoft Bing, use LinkedIn, use Twitter ads, use Facebook, Insta, use Google. Certainly do your SEO, Mm -hmm. but take into account other traffic sources. And then another really big one that I think is important is acquire the lead and then nurture the hell out of yeah. that lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't just collect your leads, shove them into some list in your, in your active campaign or, or your, your MailChimp and just let them die and send them, you know, an offer once every three months or something yeah. like that and expect mm-hmm. people to want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. You can nurture them through a whole series of tactics of high value giveaways, offers, information, things that are helpful to them. Mm -hmm. And then using active campaign, which we strongly recommend (laughs) is, um, is, is, is score your leads and create behavioral experiences for that person. Mm -hmm. So if you have a mattress company and you see people coming back to your website and you see that they're looking at the benefits for people, I don't know, with bad backs or, uh, maybe it's the the fact that it's organic materials, then create automations and sequences that give them more information related mm-hmm. specifically to what it is that they mm-hmm. want. Yeah. Right? I, actually, this week, I don't know, it's weird. On TikTok, being on TikTok, mm-hmm. there's a lot of marketing video, videos that people are making. Tips on like Facebook ads, all these multiple social channels, and there's like a bunch of tips. 
I don't know. I but think it's yeah. just something I noticed this week. Yeah. You got yourself a new project. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. I want inspiration. <laughs> right after that busy week you had, you're just slapping more on your plate. That's a brilliant, a oh brilliant idea. I just saw a light go on behind Dan's eyes right now. Well, we were talking. We've been talking about TikTok for a couple of weeks, and I know that mm-hmm. uh, yeah. we've had a few people on vacation, and and Stacy is sick. Hopefully, you've got your mm-hmm. mug of whatever turmeric something, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, I like to tease Stacy a little bit. <laughs> She's made it for me before, and it. it it helped. Yeah. It <laughs> I helped. tried to give her some essential oils earlier this morning. She's like, yeah, I tried those. They don't work right now. They don't work right now? <laughs> they work for her for like, she had pain in her hand one day. And this, I, I used them on yeah. her, but who knows? Um, <laughs> so the, 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 okay, so the thing with essential oils is they're good for pr- uh, prevention. And I mean, I don't know. Some of the essential oil stuff is... is it's a little bit placebo. Some of them are far-fetched. The, the, <laughs> we have doTERRA, and I have a humidifier and a diffuser in my room. And See, I find that the breathe... The breathe... Yeah, it, it, they work together because the mm-hmm. diffuser doesn't give you any more humidity in the air. Mm-hmm. So the humidifier, I just crank it. Yeah. And then I put breathe in there at night. And I do find that that works kind of yeah. like it's kind of like a VIX. Yeah, I think it's more like see, a like mix. I have bad allergies. We're like really off track right now, but like <laughs> I, have, I have allergies and like some some essential oils they like kind of work for me, but then some scents it just like drives me nuts. Like I can't. The, I don't know. The one that I usually put on at nighttime is again the breathe the breathe well. Yeah, I put that one and then the the humidifier do the exact same thing, and it creates like that VIX effect. Yeah, well, Stacey's just opens alive. up your airways. She says I have the salt. Oh, I've been sage essential oils. <laughs> but is it a full moon, Stacy? Because then you have to sacrifice a goat at the witching hour. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh man. Well, okay. Some of my best friends and family are super hippies. So. <laughs> oh man. I'm, I'm if probably, it works, it works. We love you, Stacy. We love you, Stacy. Actually, you know what, Matt? I'm watching the stream as we're as we're doing this, and the the brio's shockingly good. Yeah, it doesn't look bad for like a like a like from what we toned down from. If Ninja streams with this thing, I mean, it's gotta yeah, be good it's enough gotta for be good. him. I mean, I could probably rearrange it a little bit. I don't like the angle mm. that's on right now, but that's just me being picky. Yeah, I got a little double chin there. I think that must be the camera angle. <laughs> Pretty smart. Jessica As Cook always. has just joined us. Hello, hey, Jessica. Jess. Hey, Jess. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> And if you are one of the 12 people watching right now via probably our Facebook watch, please drop a comment, say hi, smash that like. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, let's move on to our next what's new because we are a little bit shorter on time than normal. That's okay. Um, It's going to be a little bit quicker, uh, but Twitter stories, and I am so excited about this. This is Mm going to be big. So um, Twitter stories, uh, I mean... I haven't heard a lot about this, but recently Twitter uh, acquired a, um, a Stories app developer, Chroma Labs. So they got to be having something in the works coming soon. Um, Twitter stories are going to be, <laughs> I think they're going to be amazing. I love Twitter. Um, it's probably my most predominant social network that I'm on. Mm-hmm. Is so, it really? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I love mean, it. I, I, I follow you, so yeah. I, I see that. But. Yeah. Yeah, so, I do a lot of like lurking and reading. Like, I get a lot of news on Twitter. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you got to follow what whatever Trump is up and to. The states, the yeah. shenanigans. I just troll in the background. Like, I don't have an, my own account, mm-hmm. surprisingly, but I just troll in the background and I look and see what people are up to. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. See what's I happening. It. I use that as a news source every time. I like live tweet <laughs> hockey games and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great, uh, you know what? I think it's an, it's inevitable. I th- There's a couple of things I think that Twitter is going to kind of come bring into the mainstream i would love to see them bring periscope into the main app oh, i think nice. so too yeah. that would be yeah. the, i would love to see that i mean if even if they rebranded periscope a little yeah. bit just a twitter live mm-hmm. and just yeah. it's all in one yeah yeah it, it, it's a little disparate and i also like if they brought live streaming in to there i think you would see a ton of gamers going to twitch as a platform if they could monetize you it. mean twitter Twitter. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yo, for sure. Yeah, I yeah. think live streamers like their mm. primary uh, like social media platform, at least that I see, is Twitter. That's where everyone yep. is for the mm-hmm. gaming community. So that's right. Um, oh, we've got Paul Webster finally hey, got Paul. to live at the hall. Hey, 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 Paul, how's it going? So we'll Paul do... had a busy week at the auto show. He did. He I know. Did. Uh, I think who um, Justin had a friend who was there, and Justin said that his friend uh, saw Paul there, and it was ah, kind of cool. Seeing, very cool. Uh, automobile and stuff. Yeah. Paul's got a Paul's got a great uh, app called Auto Mobile that you mm-hmm. would want to go check out. Um, Automobile.com. Yeah. 
Bing, bing, bing. Go and subscribe and compare your vehicles, people. Mm -hmm. It's a really great uh, it's a really great app. We've been working with uh, Paul for several months, but de definitely if you're in the market for a car, mm -hmm. go check it out. If you're a car geek, go check it out and sure. run that comparison. I know there's a couple in chat, so you can dig into that. Mm -hmm. So nice. yeah, all right, let's awesome. get back on track. All right, back <laughs> on track. Uh, another quick uh, what's new. So uh, this article right here, uh, it's talking <coughs> about everyone knows Peloton's controversial ad uh, throughout the holiday season. So it's kind of coming back and kind of looking at it and seeing like was it really a win for them mm -hmm. and it goes through and i think a lot i think a lot of people ended up buying pelotons um mm -hmm. through the holidays yep. uh, it did probably affect their image a little bit um but it goes along the lines of i guess you could say quote unquote any pr is good pr type thing right? i mean it was funny yeah. the thing is is <laughs> the way peloton markets their stuff um, they've been the subject of so many memes that you almost have <laughs> to think that they're crafting their commercials to you okay? Yeah, that uh, <laughs> the book just decided to come off the shelf. <laughs> Something's happening in the house. We yeah. it's a it's a house from the eighteen hundreds, quite possibly haunted. Must be a full moon. It could be. I don't so know understand how that happened. <laughs> the book was standing right up. I don't know. It's definitely a ghost. Oh my god. One hundred percent. The article says so, like it, it's working for them because in Q two released Wednesday, the company saw a revenue lift of seventy seven percent. Wow. So and and I mean, there's jokes, a lot to be jokes said. on us. They're yeah, they they are the subject of a ton of memes, and I think it does nothing but helps them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because they never comment on anything, so I think that they're sitting back, thanking the Lord that people are creating parodies and memes. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a big a big meme is like you know the, the there's one where the the Peloton is on like the top floor of a penthouse in obviously <laughs> Manhattan, and it's like yes, I always like to work out on my perfectly groomed <laughs> headhouse studio apartments while yep. I look down on the surfs below. Exactly. Oh my God. But I, you know, it's all part of it. I, I do think that this, I do think that this uh, falls under the category of, of all press is good press. Yep. Oh, there goes that guy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously the, the reach that they're getting Especially Twitter lights up because that's where everybody snarks. Mm -hmm. That's the social network of snark mm -hmm. um, and memes. So, so all the pitchforks are too. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, I mean, a lot of these people are simply go basing it on the price of a Peloton, which is like yeah. five thousand dollars and sixty dollars a month U.S. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't own them. Like you're not the target market. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the target market is is mm -hmm. is upscale people that can afford those types of things. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's from that perspective, I do think that they are crafting this. And I think Ryan Reynolds with uh, Aviator was it Aviator Jim? Yeah, yeah. That same actress, yeah, um, did an Aviator Jim commercial. Mm. I don't know if you knew that. Yep. Um, and Ryan Reynolds just basically scripted up. They did it kind of very last minute and it was a fantastic, they got tons of play as well because nice. she was sitting at a bar drinking, yeah. which she finally <laughs> had learned, right? <laughs> so, so really great work on, on the part of Peloton. I yeah. mean, I think, I definitely think it, it's intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. All right. Moving Oops. right along. Next article. This is Spitfire today. I'm loving it. Um, marketing tech. They have a really interesting article here and I love their title. It's a little bit snarky. Customers to brands, be informative and funny on social to woo us, oh, and respond to our every whim. So I, I kind of like that title. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but the, what I found really interesting here in this article is they talk about two-thirds, so 65% of customers or consumers say that they're more likely to purchase from a company they've followed for a month, mm -hmm. while more than half, so 54% uh, in this study, mm -hmm. are very or extremely likely to look at a company's social presence while researching a product. Absolutely. Yet, more than 51% mm -hmm. admit that they would hit the exit button if a brand's content was not relevant to them personally, with a third, so 34% in the study, doing the same if the content was boring. And I think that this is just evidence of our mm -hmm. what, what we preach on every episode of Live at the Hive, oh, you know what I mean? Make sure that your content's relevant, that it's mm -hmm. um, you're giving people information, that your social media is active. Because if someone's looking to spend, like maybe <laughs> maybe your product's like two or three hundred dollars, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? For the average consumer, they're gonna look at your website, your social media, mm -hmm. get a feel for your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Versus, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, actually, I was definitely just, important. I was just talking yeah. to uh, a client today and a friend, um, and we were, he was talking about he had bought some. Not AirPods, but knockoff AirPods. 
mm-hmm. and had done a ton of extensive research in order to do it because when you go through a purchasing cycle, for example, Amazon right now has the very real issue of soliciting paid reviews from people. Like they yes. literally get them to buy the product. Yes. They go through the process and then they post that positive mm-hmm. review. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really difficult. Consumers know this. Mm -hmm. that Amazon reviews are difficult to trust. Yes. You have to go research. Like you have to click through on Amazon Mm -hmm. to that person to see their Mm -hmm. other reviews. And Mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard to see if they're legit. There is one story that I was looking at on YouTube the other day um, and it was a lockbox and it was Amazon Mm -hmm. recommended. Mm -hmm. And I guess the vendor put a $10 Amazon gift card in the lockbox in exchange for a review. Mm -hmm. Very shady. You guys really have to be careful of... um, reviews on Amazon and I think that's why as Dan was getting to it's just as important to go and check out their social media and things like that and mm-hmm. get a sense of the company yeah, yeah. yeah. well yeah. and that's how you I mean that's that's the multi-point kind of research right yeah. I'm not just going to read one review site yeah and then say okay cool I'm going to spend X amount of dollars I mean if it's if it's something tiny yeah maybe but even then it's a long shot yeah, yeah sure. even then I mean I mean if you're buying a Logitech brand or something that's large I mean you can get good reviews yeah. everywhere right yeah. it's easier to find them yeah. but I think the the lesson there is that these 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 reviews and the content need to be multi points for your business yeah you can't just have reviews on Google mm-hmm. or Facebook mm-hmm. or Amazon if you're selling a product but they're I mean G2 is admittedly is expensive Mm-hmm. But um, we have a review management product yes, we do. that will allow you to to multi, uh, to push um, review requests mm-hmm. and reviews uh, to multiple different sources because you want that multi point and then really really try to create good engaging content about your product and appeal to people's emotions. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the auto industry, gearheads love. All the tech that goes into every single one of those it's vehicles. Yeah. I yeah. always kind of refer to April's husband, Andrew, yep. <laughs> as, a, as a good use case for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Emily B., thanks for joining. Hey, how's it going, Emily? Um, but he manually researched his BMW using, I think, Excel spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. Cross, I, that's not, I'm not that kind of guy. Well, <laughs> it's not that, my car is gray, and it's big enough, and my kids can spill stuff in it. Though. That's why you have all the mobile... <laughs> That's oh, why yeah. you, oh, look at you. There you go. <laughs> look at all this free clout. <laughs> um, yeah, and and uh, and and when you cr- think of the kind of content, and Matei's going to talk a little bit about this, you know when it resonates. Like It's very obvious from the production standpoint um, mm-hmm. to see what resonates and what doesn't. And mm-hmm. don't be afraid to fail a test. Absolutely. Right? So mm-hmm. if you're a marketing manager, you're in marketing, or you're a business owner, Mm-hmm. I think it's important to say we tried these 10 concepts and six of them didn't resonate. Yeah. That's a good mm-hmm. test. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. dump the six or revise them or tweak them. Yeah. Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did a bit of that. Uh, it was like a hit or miss like the past few weeks where we were posting certain graphics to mm-hmm. certain social channels. Yep. So like, again, like I said it before at the beginning, uh, on Instagram, we tried posting infographics on Instagram with uh, carousel style. Mm-hmm. People did not resonate with it. People just kept on sw- kept on going. I don't know. The yep. audience is different on Instagram. They want to see static images or video content. R- yeah. Rather. So we did a bit of tweaking to the graphics and we put it on Facebook yep. to see how it would do. And it did way better. The same carousel nice. or? Same carousel, yep. same graphics. Put well, it on. I, I think, think it depends on yeah. the the uh, the target audience as well. Facebook, there's more of a, I think, more people on Facebook take the time to go mm-hmm. through the content. Mm-hmm, rather, mm-hmm. Is Instagram, the younger audience, I think they just keep on. It's also a swipe up user mm-hmm. experience. Yep, very much a swipe up user experience on Instagram. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Carousels in general, like if you're looking at your website. Yep. Um, a, a lot of people love carousels, and frankly, carousels suck. <laughs> like they do because nobody goes to the second and the third yeah. mm-hmm. and the fourth. It's when they refresh the feed that they probably see them, right? It's better yeah. to have one targeted message on your website instead of mm-hmm. using a carousel mm-hmm. and then guiding mm-hmm. that user through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On Instagram, what I've always seen is that that carousel format has never performed or if the first image will perform, but the second and third and mm-hmm. fourth don't. Mm-hmm. 
I think carousels are more useful for people like if you I, I don't know if you're at uh, if you're if, if you're out with your family or something you know yeah. you don't want to spam the something feed. more personal yeah. you can, it's more of a personalized thing as opposed to a marketing mm -hmm. thing but again there's a lot of different ways to test on those platforms right but we yeah. also made sure that when we do post carousels the only carousels we do post are is relatable content to the yes. audience so an example for one of our clients it was like seven tips how to bathe your dog mm -hmm. very cute very uh cute infographic that we had um i think we have mm. we have it there in the graphics yeah uh, matt if you want to pull it up we did a little infographic but this is the one that i used on pinterest but it was split up in a carousel on facebook mm -hmm. this one did very well and even the most random target audience too shared it like a plumbing company that was a beautiful segue from the article into the What's yes, working? It, yes, was, it was. Yeah, I'm also. Um, oh, uh, that's another one. Uh, but the this one, it will be going out soon. But the other one with the, uh, the dog. With the dog, yeah, that one did well on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Also because it's it's cute, fun, resonates with the audience, and with that kind Can of. Can you content, zoom that in a bit, Matt? Yep. That's the kind of content that we usually use for carousel because people are willing. This, this is the one for Pinterest, but it was split up into like carousel format mm -hmm. and it performed very well on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So again, Stacey and I, it's like a hit and miss kind of learning experience. We yep. realized that more relatable content, it's safer to do a carousel. Whereas if it's something that's more like a hard sell, yep. stay away from the carousels. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think that's important <clears throat> is to uh, categorize and qualify your, your thematic, like how you're messaging. Mm -hmm. And you should never go beyond uh, like 10% ask, mm -hmm. right? Like you really have to think about the type of content you're, you're pushing to your, to your people. Yeah, and then we saw it was getting engagement. So then when we did, I know on our client's website, they had further information about dog, dog bathing tips. Mm -hmm. So we led them to that part of their website, which again, increased traffic to their yep. website. And then we learn from that, which we'll be doing the same for on uh, Pinterest. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Week. I think one important thing about Pinterest to keep in mind is <clears throat> always try to, to publish the pin from a website mm -hmm. if you can, because you will get that, that static link to your site. And Pinterest tends to go in waves where yeah. Facebook doesn't really do that. They don't resurface things in the same way. Yeah. So you may have a pin that was popular. So you want one evergreen content, yeah. right? So how to bathe your dog is a theme that's evergreen. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, you get pinned. As you start to get pinned more and more, you can take off if you get into their Discover feed, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll, what you start to see are these spikes in traffic and you know we have Mama Knows that that site. We have mm -hmm. um, we have one pin that has twenty seven thousand pins <clears throat> and repins on it. So every spring, it's it's a series of posts about hummingbirds. So people that are into hummingbirds, um, and what it does is every spring around the same time we see a traffic surge from Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And so if you start to block those out strategically throughout the year, depending on the time of year, you can create this kind of flow of evergreen traffic that comes. And, yep. and, and that's, that's the same thing I noticed on uh, Pinterest, the algorithm yep. where there's like spikes with certain content is shared. Yep. Like, cause when you, you look at the analytics, like organic versus like paid kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah, we, I started boosting and, you know, uh, pushing for certain ads that have are, that have done well yep. and they're coming back in a season. People are starting to look for them again mm -hmm. and just going in and boosting a, a little bit at that certain time. And it just takes off. People just love be looking at the content and sharing it. Yeah. This is uh, what I'm going to name the, the, the <coughs> surfing strategy <laughs> that uh, we've seen before. Um, and yeah. I, I, I tend to uh, just personally test a lot of things with Facebook's uh, mm -hmm. paid versus organic algorithm. Mm -hmm. Not as much with Pinterest, but um, I might start doing because it sounds like they're starting to do a similar, similar oh, yeah. thing as well. Yeah. Is what you do is on your, um, whether it's, it doesn't matter if it's Pinterest or it's, <laughs> it's Facebook, you can, you can target the same people. Highly target a post. So for example, you could do the seven ways to bathe your dog or seven things to know about bathing your dog and, and find a target audience that would be very, very interested in that content, right? Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you post it and give it a $20 boost to that specific audience and encourage the share because that's the number one metric on all social networks. 
Mm -hmm. Like keep in mind, they're all the same. That share is the most, is the metric that carries the most weight on Facebook, then a comment. And lastly, a reaction. And what Facebook is doing is it's waiting whether or not that content should be shown in people's organic feeds because one key way is to say, are people commenting on this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And are they sharing it? If, you, mm -hmm. if they start to share your content, what ends up happening, so that boost gets you the initial shares. And then what you want to do is encourage the sharing. Mm -hmm. As people start to share it, you'll move into the organic algorithm. And if you, that's why it's like the surfing uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. It's like surfing. If you've ever tried to yeah. surf, you have to catch the lip of the wave. Mm -hmm. You'll either fall flat, mm -hmm. but if you catch it, you just take off. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's exactly what <laughs> that strategy that you're talking about is aims to do. Yep. The key to that is to find the right target audience um, and interests mm -hmm. that you're targeting that to. Mm -hmm. And then when they're commenting, comment back to every single one of them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Invite them to. Yeah. Right. Because that's a, that's a big. Yeah. hundred percent. And then yeah. again, like this past week, I've done that with the certain posts where I see they're gaining traction. The spring is coming and there's certain posts that yeah. people are starting to look for again. Just go back in the background, watch it increase, mm -hmm. go in there, start engaging it again and sharing it. And I also go and I share with influencers as well because mm -hmm. <clears throat> you retagging them brings not only your uh, target audience there on yep. the pin. It also encourages the followers of that influencer to come on in and start mm -hmm. sharing that content that oh. you posted. Awesome. Um, was there anything else you wanted to touch on, on, on these or is that kind of the, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that that covers it. Um, I mean, we, we can, we've done a lot of this, um, and we can we go could, really in depth, but I think we got like the key points yeah. of what we like. I think to we do. could throw up. And one of the key points I think that, that Matei was talking about today earlier when we were talking about what to do here is just throwing up some examples of how powerful infographics are and how yeah, people 100%. really do get engaged with them. Um, I think, I think it's kind of perceived as a you know, 2016 strategy or 2015 mm -hmm. strategy. And yeah. I, I don't think that's the case. Actually. No, for sure. I have uh, the sports <laughs> infographic up right now. Yeah, this one was really good. This, um, we love these ones. We do these ones a lot. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they work really well. So we'll, I, I, I'm waiting for my delay to, <laughs> but if you can make that one full screen and then we can start to scroll down as soon as I can see it. There we go. Okay. So this is for us Thanksgiving. Every, uh, U.S. Thanksgiving, there are a slate of <clears throat> games and, and their rivalry games, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was, if you scroll down a bit there, Matt, I don't know. If the, the Lions versus the Bears. We did the Lions versus the Bears. Yep. Um, but you guys had some fun, and we all did, I think, if I recall correctly, because this yep. one was last year. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. With just some of the different puns, right? How many, oh, yeah. how many, what was it, how? At the bottom, it was the weight I think it was the weight of the, the whole yeah. team so, in turkeys. So in we turkeys, did like yeah. a turkey can run 20, 25 miles per hour, right? Yep. So then we compared how fast a turkey runs with uh, some of the top NF, uh, yep. NFL players that were on each team. So mm -hmm. um, Brian Jones can do 22.11 miles per hour. That was his top speed recorded during the game. Yep. Um, and then also the weight. So a turkey weighs 19, like an average of 19 pounds. That's the total weight of the uh, NFL mm -hmm. team. So 14,444 pounds. I find yeah. it great that a turkey can run faster than the fastest NFL. Player. Yeah. <laughs> know, right? And then it'd be, we did the one. I'll just move the screen over here because it's getting caught off <laughs> by you. But uh, we did like um, the lions weigh a total of 299 turkeys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's, it, it's, it's cool stuff like that. Um, and it just caught fire mm -hmm. yeah. and it works really well. Yeah, it works really well for link building and we distributed these to other webmasters that wanted content. Um, and that's another great thing about infographics that you can do is you can give them to other people to link back to you and mm -hmm. you're like, you're giving other people free content mm -hmm. and they get their eyeballs on and, and typically, you know, site owners and influencers where, wherever it is. And we do this also with bloggers and with journalists is like if you literally almost write the article for them and say, hey, here's feel free. Keep in mind, a lot of these bloggers and journalists have very, very mm -hmm. insanely tight deadlines. Yeah. So they see that and they love it because it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I can make some edits and you just took one thing off my plate. 
Mm -hmm. That's a good dirty PR strategy. Like it's an easy PR strategy yep. Yep. is to give them not just a press release, but give them like the bones of an article pretty much that they could write about. We're, uh, we're also, we also had the idea for on Pinterest as well with major influencers mm -hmm. of doing, uh, of sharing groups with them yep. where we can, they're going to be like, it's kind of like a stories where we can go in talk about certain topics and yep. we go in and engage them as well, mm -hmm. answer any questions. And that way you can make your Pinterest account thrive yeah. and drive that traffic you need. That's some good, uh, mm -hmm. them's there's some good solid tips folks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> across the board for some engagement. All right. Well, I think it's 515. I have 18% left on my, uh, my Mac. You made it though. There you go. Just yeah. My, my MacBook battery lasts a good solid hour and 10 minutes. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> good old Apple yeah. continuing to pump out quality products since Steve Jobs died. <laughs> can I just do one Slam. live at the hive ranting about Apple oh, my and their unfair practices? Live at the hive yeah, episode 119, the fall of like, Apple. <laughs> like the iPad Pro connector that is soldered on top, directly on top of the circuits of the newest versions of the iPad. So if it ever breaks, it is irreparable. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> By design, that's why I buy so the 2012 spend... products so then I can just do it all myself. <laughs> and I, I, I said it today and I'll say it again is like Steve Jobs' runway for his product development ran out like a year and a half ago because mm -hmm. all the stuff that they've got coming out now is designed to be obsolete mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's 60% more expensive. So there you go. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. that's my mini amp. Just mini just says away rant day. away. <laughs> Don't get me going. <laughs> Don't get me. I could do a whole. I should do one just on because I actually researched this when I was ranting about them when this was actually going on. I had a saga last year with Apple where mm -hmm. I could not get my iPhone X repaired by them. They charged me uh, six hundred dollars once. It was under warranty. It's IP sixty seven rated. I took it into the pool for I swear to God five seconds. The screen bugged out. They wouldn't honor it because they said, we don't honor it if you submerge it in water, even though IP67 rating is supposed to work. Water. So they wouldn't honor it. $600. Repaired the screen. It broke. I took it back. I had to argue with them that it's their warranty repair 24 hours after I paid for the repair. The phone mm -hmm. screen bugged out. Mm -hmm. Had to argue with them for 45 minutes oh to get the, them to repair what they screwed up in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then... With the next repair, it got wet, unintentionally got wet. Then I took it back in. They said they're not honoring it. They would only give me another iPhone for the low, low price of $980. Oh, so low. And I was like, you know what? I'm out yeah. with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Samsung, here I come. Samsung, here I am. <laughs> oh, my God. Then my iPad Pro, I tweaked the lightning cable. It bent the internal thing. I took it to the... Apple Store, we don't even repair those anymore, sir. It's like a $1,300 iPad Pro. That's wow. how much they cost. New. Yeah. <sighs> so I called Jesus. a guy, an off, you know, third party repair guy. He said, I'll charge you 30 bucks. I can have a look at it. But if and it came off the done. wrong way, it just destroys the board. And he goes, Apple did that on purpose to sell more iPads because iPads were people were hanging on to them for too long. Then I have another saga about a laptop, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Weekly Apple antics with Dan. I would love that. I could do that. I could tell this story over a... It literally took long enough. It takes me about 40 minutes to tell the entire story. Oh detail, detail, God. yeah. But let's talk about the Apple <clears throat> scam. They have good products, but they overcharge for these things. Like a lot of the components are components you, that are in Samsung's too. But you know what? I guess if there's a business strategy, mm -hmm. um, Tim Cook is a genius because the iPhone last year generated more revenue than the entire Swiss watchmaking industry. Holy They've shit. been around for a while. I was part of Swiss. that. Isn't that scary? Everyone almost like like the majority of people in the world are all on one <laughs> phone manufacturer. Yep. Can you imagine, well, can you imagine if everyone was driving the same car? I don't know about search. that, the majority, because Android is the majority OS. That's true. Well, I guess... Two. Apple's the single largest, and Jessica's saying, uh, <laughs> Jessica Cook's saying, please, for the Apple. I could do this I could do this all week long. Like, I could just, yeah. I mean, I could literally probably talk about this, because it, it's so very annoying, right? Mm -hmm. That 
Um, and if you look at, I actually went and checked Apple's earnings reports because mm-hmm. they're public. Mm-hmm. And if you go into their their earnings reports and you look at the increase in uh, repair and warranty, it's billions and billions of dollars has increased over the last five years of them generating revenue for war- non mm-hmm. non warranty repairs. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And it like I used to go into the Apple store and I was like a lifelong Apple customer. Mm-hmm. I've, like since iPhone, the very first one, I got the very first one. And yeah. since then up to the 10, I had been pretty much on every version of the iPhone, right? It's all it's all gone to crap as soon well, as Steve Jobs yeah. is no longer there. Yeah, exactly. The quality, everything. Yeah. We should, we should do like in-depth like tech An marketing. Expose. Yeah, tech marketing expose, tech company expose. We can do a political marketing. Oh, jeez. Um, and geez. I, <laughs> you should get me on that one. No, I, will, no, no. I will come on as a guest. Producer Matt will come up from behind. <laughs> Policy <laughs> one. Matt's a bit of a junkie. Yeah. We'll switch a little bit of political we'll junkie. Political <laughs> junkie. Uh, look, I've already had one Twitter account banned because of me getting into <laughs> politics and insulting one of the TRU MPs. On a side note, no, producer sorry. Matt won't be here next week. What, next what Friday. Are you, what are you? Oh, you're going to? I'm going to go watch the Habs lose. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I am. At least you said it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, producer Matt will not be in the house next week, but um, we'll see if we can get like a like different a double, producer on. Yeah, double we can guess. Get, I'm gonna onboard someone. This guy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you basically once it's going dude once you gotta in, press four buttons i'll just, make it so you only have to press four buttons just label everything you're good. <laughs> you're good it's a good it's a good excuse to go buy an elgato stream deck that is that is yeah <laughs> i mean yeah because oh then you just have literally a do you see the fear in my eyes you don't even need, <laughs> if you buy one of those you don't even need producer matt anymore you could do it oh, over on your end could do it but maybe we could invite adrian that he would be a great guest producer that and one would be a good man. great he's got the yeah. south african accent that slays maybe yeah you know what i'll i'll email him he was just in the well we're gonna see him next week he's coming in next week anyways isn't he uh, to record some videos or something yeah. producer mate jessica's saying no way no way. producer man <laughs> producer mate i feel like she's throwing shade straight your way oh she sir. is she it's like her job ah, okay. shade. <laughs> <laughs> the time. all right guys well it's been nice rapping mm-hmm. so i don't i i'm i'm down with everything on the especially on the uh I would like to do one on Google privacy. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to actually forward this video. I've been talking about a couple of times this week. I believe it was, I want to say it might be Linus tech tips, but it might also have been wired. I can't remember um, where this guy can go. If you go into your Google privacy settings and you want to scare yourself a little bit, mm-hmm. go deep into your privacy settings and you can see every single, if you use Google maps, they had the location I tracking that. on, even though you turned it off, and they mm-hmm. went like, "Oops." Yep. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see everything where I you've mean, been, and it's the like day, minute. It, it show, by the minute it shows your route. So you turn off location tracking on your device, and Google was still tracking you. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it was iOS or Android. It's mm-hmm. not just an, a platform thing. Google Maps was doing it, mm-hmm. and you can go back to like 2018 Sunday. The date it will show you a how did, map how get of that? everywhere that you went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna guess that the argument is that oh, you put accept. Well, no, it's 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 you did accept it, but it's the features that allow our services to provide you with the most convenience. Mm-hmm. And they're right; it mm-hmm. is like when you get in the car and you have a meeting on your calendar, it'll, it'll give tell you. The you yeah. Here are the directions. It's going to take you 45 minutes. You should leave here, and it'll automatically do it. Oh, yeah, it does mm-hmm. as soon as I get in my car. Yeah. yeah. There, um, yeah so. There's this cool video online. If you have a chance to go see it this weekend, you, you should see it because it's pretty. It's cool, but it's also scary. Some guy put 90 or something like that phones into a wheelbarrow mm-hmm. in a city in Europe, and he was walking on the street with all these phones on in Europe, and he was causing congested traffic on Google Maps. <laughs> and the streets were empty. The streets were empty and he's just walking in the middle of the road with a wheelbarrow with 90 phones in it <laughs> and he's showing the map on google and it's just all red it's just all <laughs> red and there's no vehicles that's scary that's, that's like amazing. some that's, black mirror stuff that's that's oh yeah black mirror is like yeah. four years away yeah yeah if you oh, don't know what black God. mirror is um, just have like 90 phones in your truck 
you'll never have like <laughs> you'll never have like traffic ever again. Well, that's great. And you know, the other problem was the U.S. military had to stop allowing um, Fitbits for service members because the Taliban was able to access their maps that showed their running. No way. Oh wow! At on on these. Well, what do they? What do you do if you're stuck in Afghanistan? That's true. These, these all these folks are going for like runs and even patrols and stuff like that. Yeah. They were finding patrols that the Taliban was able to access and get in and access all of this map location oh, yeah. data, which is effectively intelligence information. Exactly. Right? So, all right, we could go on. This is not Joe Rogan's podcast yet. <laughs> this could turn into a three hour. It's easy. <laughs> all right. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for watching live at the hive One Eighteen. Next week, we may have two Logitech Brios and just make life simple because it does look pretty darn good mm -hmm. when they're close up. Mm -hmm. All right. Alrighty. Peace.